So I got a video from a student of mine who's doing my web stack training courses and they're interested in IT. So let me just read the message and I'll jump into it. I've been wondering about what would it look like to have my own dedicated hosting platform? Is this achievable? How much would the operating cost be? Including stuff like leasing a static IP address. I'll get into this in a second. I want to use WordPress on the hosting platform to make websites. Then I guess I'll have to pay for that additionally. So good questions. Let me just jump into it first of all. If you want to start a hosting business, that's a whole different kettle of fish. It's a whole different set of skills and a whole different business from being a developer. That said, I believe that everybody, regardless of what you end up doing, should have at least some basic coding skills because modern day business requires it especially if you're getting into web hosting. So to get into web hosting, fortunately for you and people watching this video, I've done this. So there's many different ways to approach this. The easiest way, I'll get to the easiest way right now, is you uh, get uh, a VPS hosting, a dedicated virtual private server. And this you can get for, I think as little as $50 a month uh, USD, where you could host multiple websites on this server. Um, it would be not the biggest server, but it'd be big enough to host your typical small business website, many of them in fact. I would recommend that you find a VPS that has not only um, a virtual server, that means you can scale up by just clicking buttons. So let's say you start up and you only have one client and you have 10 clients. And then all of a sudden you got 20 clients and you need more server space. With a VPS, a virtual private server, you'll be able to just with click a button, bing, 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 add more RAM, add more disk space, add more CPU to your server. And it's all seamless. It takes like uh, just like 30 seconds and you're scaling up without having to reconfigure and do what you had to do like I used to do. I used to have servers were going to go way back in the 90s. So I used to have my own static dedicated um, line coming in, static IP, meaning a fixed IP address. When you log on to the internet through cable and so forth, that IP address can change. So it's hard to host with that. But if you have a fixed IP address, it's always the same one no matter what you're on 24 seven. Anyway, that's another story. I teach about this in my web foundations course, by the way. Anyhow, so um, when you want a static IP, I had a static IP rather line coming in. I had one of the first in Canada. And uh, and they gave me 32 static IPs, which was crazy because there's a limited number of static IPs in the world and they're running out apparently now. Anyhow, so I had 32 static IPs, which was overkill because all you need is one now with modern HTTP, modern hosting. You can have one IP and host unlimited number of websites, so it's no big deal. That being said, I had 32 static IPs and I was hosting sites, including sites that were being uh, funded by venture capital. Um, I use a traditional server. So I literally had hardware. I bought the hardware, I bought the server software. I had the routers coming in, the Cisco router, et cetera, et cetera. It was a big production. Today, don't do that. Today, you get yourself a virtual private server, you pay your 50 bucks a month or 60 bucks a month, and they take care of everything. They take care of maintenance, and they take care of downtimes, and uh, power backups, all this kind of stuff. So you can start your hosting business this way. And a lot of uh, I know publicly traded hosting companies, they told me, people I've been with for years, they said they started just like that. They would just rent server space from some other host and they just expanded their server business and eventually they had their own uh, facilities and so forth. But for now, when you're first starting off, all you do is you get yourself a VPS and if you're not great with Linux, back-end Linux uh, code, uh, not coding, but back-end Linux management, um, just get a VPS that has a, a web host manager or some similar visual interface that allows you to manage the server. What does web host manager do? Well, first of all, it's an application, it's a web application that allows you to manage uh, your server fairly well. Uh, you can add domains, add sites, and uh, give people email addresses, do forwarding, set up FTP, set up SSH, set up SSL certificate, everything you possibly could want. With a fully managed VPS, which we use for some of our applications, they take care of everything else. So if I have a support request, I just send them a little email, boom, 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 bangs your uncle because I have a VPS, they take care of it and I don't have to worry about it. So then you can concentrate on the business of just getting new clients. 
Last question. If I want to use WordPress on the hosting platform to make websites, then I guess I have to pay for that. No, you won't. Because if you, WordPress is free. So if you know the basics of coding, if you've done my basic web stack course, for example, installing WordPress for free will be like this for you. And so you just download WordPress, you upload it onto your server, and Bob's your uncle, you're ready to go. The other thing is that a lot of these control panels like Web Host Manager, cPanel, etc., they have WordPress built in. So you just one click install and, and there you go. So no, you don't need to pay additionally for that. And there you go. So that's how I would do it. If you want to start your own hosting business, your own dedicated platform, I would just do it via VPS, virtual private servers. And uh, you can build up from there. It's an interesting business. It's hard because a lot of competition now. But once people, it's a good business also because once people are uh, with you, they s typically stay with you. It's very rare that somebody moves from one hosting company to the next. Very rare because it's just a big pain in the butt. Just like banks, p people don't move from bank A to B, even if bank A really gets under their skin. It's just a, such a big hassle. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. And uh, links below if you want to learn how to code, you want to learn about the lizard brain, check it out. Very popular course, actually. It's just uh, just launched it as, as uh, I'm recording this in February, and people are really liking it already. It's only been a couple of days. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.